I'm here with Stephen Elliott, the founder of The Rumpus, which is a literary website. They do a lot of cool random stuff, including the first app you've developed, which is called Typing Writer, and it turns your iPad into a typewriter. You just open it up. It comes preloaded with first drafts from a bunch of famous writers, uh, you know, just to inspire you, like Rick right. Moody, Jim Shepard, you know, Melissa Phoebos. And then say, you know, you would start a new document, and then, yeah. hey, how are you? What's wild though is like you can't. Um, There's no back. You right. can't back up. You just have to keep going, right? Okay. But if you want to like, if you want to change something, right. you can you can swipe over it, and you get this like liquid paper, or you can still <laughs> see the word underneath right. it, you know, or you can um, you know you can type over something. Um, you can move this back. Now what's really great though is if you're using uh, a keyboard. So now here, with the keyboard, you make these errors, but you have to keep going. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the whole point of the typing writer is like, encourage you to get these first drafts on the page. We just kind of missed working with a typewriter because the word processor, you know, you can just cut and paste and, and you right. delete, and so you don't, you don't keep going right. forward. And there's not this idea as much of like separate drafts, then it's just like this one thing that you're kind exactly. of... Exactly. And then, you know, you can, you can also, when you're done, you know, you can open this up, you know, in other documents, right? I can, like, I can, uh, I can email this, for example, then it would arrive as a text document. I could open it in another app, like in the iWriter or in the Dropbox. Mm -hmm. It's great for getting a first draft. And then you can see here all these other first drafts from people like, you know, mentioned like Tao Lin, you know, Amy Vril. And, and you can see like what they do. And you know, so it's just a simple little app. It's very cool for getting some writing done on your iPad when you're on the go. If you're my age, <laughs> you remember like I started writing on a typewriter. You know, I wrote my first book mostly on a typewriter. The thing about the rumpus is there's no conscious strategy, you know? I mean, we have like the letters in the mail, you know, which right. is like where you subscribe and you get like a letter, like folded up, stuff in an envelope in your mail twice a month. Or we made the movie based on my novel, Happy Baby, that we did a whole bunch right. of Kickstarter. That was a, that's a rumpus production. Like, so it's just kind of whatever catches our, our, our attention and our interest, you know, and our enthusiasms. But now I've been through Kickstarter twice, I have right. a lot of ideas. So, I mean, having gone, gone through the <laughs> process twice, I mean, do you feel like you have a pretty good understanding now about like what works and what doesn't work on Kickstarter? Yeah, I have, a, I have some great, I really feel like I have solid ideas of what works on, kick, on Kickstarter. I, I also know that we probably wouldn't, I don't know that I would ever do another one. Okay. You know what I mean? You can't, it's kind of, you couldn't, you can do it once, maybe twice. Right. It's you a know? pretty all-consuming thing. It's, right? It is all-consuming and it's not, and people get tired of you right. if you do it too often. And, and you really have to do the one-on-one -on -one right. request, so you're sitting there like, hours all day long. Everybody that's ever contacted you, you're sending them emails. A lot of Kickstarters are, are run really poorly and, and right. they fail for that reason. Right, because I remember like when you talk about the one-on-one, -on -one, you, you, I think you went through and you basically sent a personal email to almost every, every backer, right? Yeah, to every backer pretty much. And, uh, and I didn't ask for money. I always just asked like, hey, would you put this on your Facebook page? Would you tweet this? Because actually what matters in Kickstarter is not the amount the backer gives, but the number of backers. The, even if they just give a dollar, the number of backers, will, you'll have an average. And say you have a, if you have 100 backers and you have you know, $9,000, so you're averaging you know, $90 a backer. Right. If you get 200, that average will stay the same. The average never changes. Even right. though you're only asking for a dollar, and I know that's totally counterintuitive, <laughs> but you don't know who has money and who doesn't. Right. And you don't know what's going to happen. And you focus too much on doing the, like getting the big, the big Never people. focus on the money, focus on the crowd. Right. Get a bigger crowd. That's right. all that matters. Right. So I think the conclusion here is that uh, anyone who's having trouble with their indie film Kickstarter should shoot you an email. Yeah, that's probably true. That's <laughs> probably true. <laughs> You'd probably take a little, little cut. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us, Steve. Hey, so thanks for having me. He's a typing writer, and the movie, which will hopefully be out next year, is uh, Happy Baby. That's right.